Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we are coming from Thessaloniki, or we say Thessalonica, uh, Greece, and we are traveling the journeys of Paul. And honestly, we don't even know what day it is. Yeah. So we're filming this video, and it's gonna Might be Wednesday. It's I don't know what day Tuesday. it is. We we we, lost we traveled uh, like for so long. And then, and it's so, it's, it's like eight hours ahead. Plus we traveled. I, and listen, I, I can't sleep on a plane, so I don't know no. what's going and on. I so I'm just, I'm just miserable and I'm, I'm, we're about to, we're, we're about to do this, but because it was a good passage, what'd you get and out of it? It goes with, my tiredness goes with, um, my takeaway. So chapter 47 is all the things that um, is going to happen to Babylon, but Babylon was the bad guy to Israel. And so Israel, that's good news to them. And then in chapter 48, he's talking about God is going to refine Israel, um, even though they don't deserve it and all this. And all my takeaway is, all I can think is I'm tired. How does God not just get so done with with his people? Because this is Israel, and this is their story, but also this is the story of humanity. And I don't know, he's long-suffering, and he continues to chase after us and pursue us, and he's forgiving, and he shows us grace and mercy, and all of that is nothing we deserve. And so my takeaway is um, three verses from chapter 48. It says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand, and your descendants like its grains. Their name would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. Um, and so, like, I just picture God saying all of this to all of us. Like, if you would just choose my way, and I, I'm chasing after you with it, I'm pursuing you, I'm enticing you, I'm making it look wonderful, and you're still con continuing to choose idols. Um, God has done every single thing, sent prophet after prophet, judge after judge. He even tells you what he's going to do before he does it so that you can give no credit to any other god or idol or anything. And we're still crazy and don't pay attention. But God's like, my way truly as our creator is the best thing for his creation. It gives us the most peace. It gives us the joy. It gives us the life that he wants for us. Yet we're stubborn and we continue to fall short. And he says all this, but I, you know, knowing scripture, I know the rest of the story. And even though Israel does not keep their end of covenant, God still keeps his end. And, um, and he goes above and beyond. He gives that exceedingly abundantly better that they could ask or imagine or deserve. And that's God's character to us too. Yeah. So a couple of the key takeaways I think that might help you as you're reading, because some of this is obviously difficult to understand. Uh, in the first chapter we read in chapter 47, it's talking about how Babylon is going to fall. And it, then, it, you know, what that, what that means is that even prior to going into exile, God had already told his people who was going to take them there, Babylon, and that eventually Babylon was going to fall. But now he goes the extra mile and he's telling them, because when people start wondering, why did God allow all of this to happen to his people? Had God forgotten? Had God forsaken? Had God punished? Had God... What, what was the what was the motivation behind all of this? In chapter 47, verse 6, he says, I was angry with my people and I have profaned my inheritance and have given them into your hands. So God gave the Israelites into the hands of the Babylonians for, for captivity, for exile. The problem was that they did more than just discipline, you know, be agents of discipline. They were they were cruel taskmasters. And then it says, because then it says, you showed them no mercy on the elderly. You laid your yoke very heavily. And then Babylon just went on to say, listen, I'm just empire building. I'm just, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to flourish. I'm going to build and I'm going to do all this. And God said, you're not. You're going to be successful because I'm trying to teach my people a lesson. 
He said, but but it, this is real. This is about them. This isn't really about you. You are going to get your consequences too. But right now it's gonna. Right now it's gonna. It's it's gonna look good for you until it's not. Mm -hmm. And then he tells him in verse nine. He says, but these two things shall come upon you in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon you in their fullness. Now. When you hear that, you're hearing, okay, when Babylon falls, when they fail, uh, how did it happen? Well, if you took your Bible and you went to the book of Daniel and you trace through Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace and the lion's den, uh, if you go through all of that, you'll find Babylon falling in a single night. They were having a, the, the leaders of Babylon were having a party and they had gotten drunk and they, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a terribly wicked party. And one of the one of the last draws in the sand, well, or lines in the sand, was that the the Babylonians went out into the into their vaults, their treasure vaults, and they took the golden cups and bowls that had come from the temple in Jerusalem, which God had just kind of basically put in storage there. Okay, so they went there and they were drinking out of them like at their party, and this they were. Mean. Yeah, that's that's when the, the handwriting was on the wall. And the Medes and the Persians attacked that night, and Babylon was overthrown in one night. These two things shall come to you in a moment in one day. So we, we find that happening. And then in the next chapter, God again is going into talking about what he's doing for Israel and how he's refining them. In verse 10, he says, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. So when jewelers would refine uh, precious metals, they would take the precious metals and they would heat them over a fire and get them so hot that impurities would rise to the surface. And once they, once they met oxygen at the top, when they came to the top of the liquid, they would burn off and it would purify that. He said, I'm going to purify. I'm going to refine my people. Well, how do you do that? Well, he says right here, he says, I have tested you in the furnace. Well, not the furnace of fire, in the furnace of affliction. And what he's saying is, I'm going to send you into problems you didn't want, you didn't ask for, and you're going to think are really bad, but they're actually going to be working together for your good. They're going to do things in your heart that you weren't willing to do in your comfort. Now, the, the irony of that is we're sitting in a hotel room right now in Thessalonica, Greece. Okay? The Apostle Paul came to Thessalonica. He's, he's, on, his, he's on his like second missionary journey. He comes to Thessalonica and he preaches and people start getting saved and it's wonderful. Paul only spent three weeks in Thessalonica because believers are not because because Jewish people in other areas who Paul had already had trouble with, they tracked him down and they followed him to Thessalonica and he was run out of town. They would have killed him. He was a Thessalonica was a dangerous place for him. But I'm gonna tell you what I saw today. When we drove around Thessalonica today, and then we kind of walked all through the city, we saw ruins just ruins. We saw, oh, we, we drove by, we saw Mount Olympus where, where, where the, 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 the Greek worshipers of the day would have been worshiping Zeus and Aphrodite and Hercules and, you know, just on and on and on. We saw Mount, uh, we saw Mount Olympus in the background. Guess what? Nothing was going on over there. <laughs> but then you start going around and you start seeing churches and so what looked like it was winning in the day, you know, this, this assault against uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, where, where is the mythology of the Greeks in Thessalonica now? It's gone. But Jesus' name is still being preached. Okay. And so, so when, when, when there are a lot of days we think this, it could not get any worse, God, why have you allowed this to happen? Well, sometimes it works out together for good. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of, here's the word, the furnace of affliction. Friends, don't neglect the furnace of affliction because that thing that we think is going to kill us may actually be the thing that refines us. So let's trust the Lord in his process. All right, we'll see you soon, and uh, we'll finish up the week tomorrow in chapter 49 and 50. Bye. Bye.